so today as you know today as everyone that we have actually gathered around here to understand what is the scope of neat ss or ini uh, ss okay uh, for md pathologist or dnb pathologist so after you have passed md or dnb pathology okay we want to understand what is the scope of neat or ini ss so we are not only going to discuss neat super speciality but we are also going to discuss about ini ss institute of national importance super speciality as well okay we what are we going to discuss today we are going to first discuss what is the pattern of the exam okay what is the change that has been there okay uh, what is the website that you should you know uh, you know enter as well as we will also uh, speak about that uh, how you should approach the exam okay now we will also discuss about what is the seat matrix what courses are available available with regards to neat super speciality versus what courses are available with regards to ini ss okay now what is the schedule of the examination okay how long the examination is conducted okay what is the pattern of examination we are going to discuss each and everything in detail okay after that after discussing that we will also discuss what is the pros and cons of these exams and whether you should sit for these exams at the per, uh, present scenario okay and what are the options also that you have after passing your md dnb pathology exam so first of all i congratulate everyone who has already passed their exams and right now you are an md pathologist you are a professional so let us uh, begin this session first okay also i am going to give some amount of time for you people to ask and clear your doubts as well okay so coming to the neat super speciality as you know that the online application submission has started from 27 july and the last date is 16th august so what you have to understand what are the requirements you have to go through the brochure i have already shared the, the latest brochure with you all so filling of the form filling of the form is not uh, you know in our hand filling of the form should be done at your particular end filling of the form is not from our end so you have to see the instructions and you have to fill up the form accordingly okay what is very important that the exam date for this year's uh, neat super speciality is 9th and 10th september so i will show you which exams which sessions are on which dates i will show everything one important thing is that 30th september is very important why it is important because after you have given the exams okay you will get a provisional degree so for admission suppose you have given the exam and you have got a good uh, you know uh, you have cleared your exams and you have sat for the neat ss you have got a good rank okay so and so for example you want to become eligible so the cut off date for qualifying for this broad speciality qualification that you are doing okay is that your provisional md degree should be in your hands latest by 30th september so this is very important this is one of the eligibility criteria that you have to understand okay so rest other things i'm not going to the de de details of that because these things you have to read and you have to fill up the form so fill up the form is by your end now what is very important that you have to understand that in 2021 till 2021 so the basic exam pattern was like this that for example if you are sitting for the pathology exam okay or for any exam so they used to divide the paper into two halves okay uh, for example uh, Uh, they they used to have the basic portion and they used to have the systemic uh, portion as well but for example if you were sitting for a clinical hematology exam so what happened that because you are a pathologist okay so approximately 60% of the questions used to come from pathology and 40% of the questions used to come from medicine okay of that particular specialty that you have chosen from clinical hematology part like that it used to be like that okay previously but now from 2022 if you see from 2022 onwards there is introduction of 13 groups so there are 13 groups which have been introduced okay for example medicine is one group okay surgery is one group okay ent is one group similarly pathology is one group okay so for example now if you see clinical hematology clinical hematology if you see this clinical hematology is basically under the medicine section so what does that mean that means any person okay there are many people who are eligible for clinical hematology okay and clinical hematology is coming under the medicine group so it means 
that for appearing for the clinical hematology exam you are falling under the medicine group and the questions that is going to be asked to you the questions that will be asked to you will be from the medicine group itself so the question will be asked to you from the medicine group itself okay is this point very clear okay so the question will be asked from medicine complete 100% of the question will be asked from medicine so as a pathologist are you eligible for clinical hematology the answer is yes but is the questions asked from pathology no because the clinical hematology is coming under the broad uh, feeder group of medicine so all questions will be asked from medicine this is the drawback that you have to understand is this point very clear to everyone so i will show you for example there are 13 such group for example this is the medical group okay now under the medicine group there are these so anyone for example for example even a pediatrics person even a person of pediatrics if he or she wants to appear for clinical hematology they are also eligible so for the md pediatrics also they have to face the question from the medicine group is this point very very clear to everyone so clinical hematology is one subject for which we as a pathologist we are eligible but the questions that we are going to face 100% of the questions they will be based out of medicine and in this 100% the questions will be asked from both the general or the basic medicine and the systemic part of the medicine okay remember this point now with regards to the preparation of the medicine component i have already shared a lot of material in the group these are the free resources that we have already shared in the group to all of you so if you can as of this point of time if you can then you should read them and you should use these notes for preparing for the medicine exam okay that is why i have shared the medicine notes with you all if you want to prepare if you want to give the exams next year if you have one year in time you want to take 12 months or you want to uh, sit for the ini exam or the institute of uh, national importance ss exam that is conducted twice a year one in january one in july so, and uh, need super speciality is conducted once a year okay it is conducted once a year usually in this month okay in the month of september they conduct so in september you will have the exam so for that purpose my recommendation for you is because our platform is only based out of pathology so we do not recommend that uh, you know you follow our platform for clinical hematology examination as of now for that purpose you will have to join some other coaching which is providing you coaching for the medicine group now always remember those individuals who have passed md med uh, md medicine okay they will be in a much better position to answer this question as compared to you all or even as compared to md pediatrics or md biochemistry individuals because it is the same way for example if a md medicine person wants to do oncopathology if for example now they are not eligible but if for example some eligibility is there then think that you know they you know if you if if we compare md medicine with md pathology and the 100% paper is coming from pathology then absolutely we are at an advantage so always remember that that uh, you know this is not very fair but this is what it is so if you if you uh, wanted to appear for clinical hematology part which most of you people are interested in okay because many of you people have joined pathology out of compulsion you did not get the branch of choice so basically sometimes you have the feeling to going towards the clinical hematology part so that is why what we are trying to tell tell you at this point of time is that that for clinical hematology md pathology or dnp pathology individuals are eligible but the basic problem is that that the questions that will be asked is from medicine 100% previously 40% questions used to come from medicine part and 60% used to come from your from from whichever line you are like from pathology but now that concept from last year that concept is not there okay so kindly tell me is this point very very clear to everyone any doubts are there with regards to clinical hematology yes okay so as i told you that there are 13 such group like medicine group surgery group so i have not gone into details of those group i wanted to show you as a pathology group as a pathology group the one thing which is available is oncopathology so this is the only dm okay this is the only dm degree or doctorate uh, doctorate exam 
for the dnb also drnb this is the only oncopathologic course that will be available okay in the dm or in the dnb is this point very clear to everyone so as a pathology okay means if you want so there are 13 groups as i told you there are 13 groups okay so 13 groups individual group will have questions 100 percent based out of that only so if you want to give the clinical hematology you have to answer the questions from the medicine group only okay is it very very clear similarly similarly if you want you are also eligible for one an another thing that is the medical genetics md pathologists they are also eligible to appear for medical genetics so if you want to give uh, you know medical genetics if you want to choose this so you have to again give exam in the medical group so via examination in the medicine group you are eligible for clinical hematology counseling as well as medical genetics counseling so for both these uh, uh, you know super specialties you are eligible and you for you know for taking admission in these two branches you have to uh, you know enroll for the medical group okay is this point very clear okay then i told you that for pathology for oncopathology as you can see for oncopathology only one uh, specialty is there and md or dnb pathology okay they can appear for this pathology uh, group and you know means what is this pathology group means if you appear in this group then 100 percent questions will be asked from pathology itself okay so you will not get any question out of pathology you will get general pathology question and systemic pathology question i think i hope this point is very clear so what are the fields well, you know that you are eligible as so as an md dnb pathologist as an md dnb uh, pass out in the need super speciality as of the year 2023 you are eligible for dm oncopathology this is one section you are you can do dm or you can do uh, you know doctorate in dnb that is the super speciality via dnb in clinical hematology also you are eligible for medical genetics but remember for medical genetics and for clinical hematology you have to fill up the medicine group because your exam will be with with uh, you know uh, the medicine group so all the questions will be asked from medicine 100 percent whereas for dm oncopathology always remember that 100 percent of the question will be asked from pathology so this is where you people stand with regards to need super speciality 2023 is this point very clear now one more thing i will tell you the cost of the form is 4254 to 50 INR is now for example you want to sit only for the medicine group okay then you only have to pay 4250 but for example you want to sit in the medicine group plus you also want to sit for the oncopathology group so you have to pay 4250 plus 4250 so then if the number of sessions are increasing okay so the costing is also going to increase so the you know so in multiple if you are giving you know all the four exams then in that amount you have to pay so is this point very clear to everyone with regards to the need super speciality yes about the groups is this very clear okay now for example as i told you that the examinations are there on two days 9 september and 10 september now as i told you for example, you are MD pathology or you are DNB pathology pass out and you want to appear for clinical hematology plus you want to take your chances in oncopathology also. You want to give both the exams. Okay. So in that case, you have to fill up one form and one day that is the medical group. 10 September, the exam for the medical group is in the morning shift between 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. This morning shift only you have to give the exam okay for the medical group it is two and a half hour exam all the exams are two and a half hours only okay also you want to give the pathology exam so the same day 10 september the same day you can see the pathology group is also there same day you have to sit for the second shift exam that is the afternoon shift from 2 pm to 4 30 pm so same day you will have to sit for both the exams so is this point very clear okay so I am not going into the details of the other group because that is not relevant to our line of, you know, of our line of pathology. Okay. okay. So is this point very, very clear? Now, this is just they are saying. Now, for example, you are giving the morning shift exam from 9 o'clock. So the registration will start from 7 a.m. So you can report at the center at 7 a.m. For afternoon shift, you can report at 12 p.m. 
okay just they have just mentioned these things so you can go and you can go through the basic brochure that i have already shared with you people okay now with regards to the super speciality in the dnb as i already told you onco pathology is not available in dnb super speciality that you are going to get why i need super speciality so only clinical hematology is something that you can get and medical genetics is something that you can get at this point of time okay is this very very clear to everyone any doubts anyone is having with regards to the need super speciality you may ask at this point of time any doubts if you are having please please ask at this point of time so is this is this abundantly clear to everyone is it very very clear to everyone okay so just to revise i am just revising something okay for you people okay so just remember the revision is this before i re i revise any of them just remember for the clinical hematology as a section who are or which are the specialties which are eligible general medicine is, is eligible md pediatrics is eligible biochemistry is eligible and pathology is available as well but remember even if all three of them want to give this exam they will have to sit for the medical group and 100% of the questions they will have to answer from the medicine group only similarly for medical genetics any specialty can do medical genetics but again they will have to sit for the medicine group exams for onco pathology only and only one specialty is eligible that is md dnb pathology so this is our branch there is no things over here see the centers i will tell you i have already shared uh, the the brochure in the relevant group in the neat ss group that we have formed i have shared over there all the centers the details of the centers are available mujhe laga ki bare mein hamare dekh paise ko aur khaskar nuwa saathi okay kindly please mute everyone so basically dr rakesh kumar bhotra yes there is a lot of background noise okay yahan ke yuvaon ko ho raha tha ek purva national player aur coach okay so so basically i hope this point was uh, clear to everyone okay till this point everything was very clear okay. now we are going to go now you have already understood about the need super speciality i'm just going to revise and short so for the need super speciality exam the courses available is onco pathology medical genetics and clinical hematology as i've already explained only for the onco pathology group only for this particular group for the onco pathology group you can uh, you know for this onco pathology group only you will get questions from pathology 100% whereas for the other two groups 100% questions will come from the medicine group so i hope this point is crystal clear to every person okay apart from that i have already told you the dates for example is 9th and 10th september and i have already shared the important dates you can go through the brochure regarding the centers as i told you the centers are not available it is available in every state okay but it is available in the major cities and in the capital only so you have to go through the list the list is already provided in the brochure that we have provided to you already in the group okay so i hope this point is crystal clear to everyone okay okay so what about under medical genetics could you please elaborate see about what do you want to know about medical genetics means medical genetics is one of the super speciality groups wherein for example you will learn about the you know all the application of the molecular uh, genetics that we learn like for example pcr okay then uh, for example fish that is the in situ hybridization okay the immunohistochemical procedures okay chemical illuminations assay flow cytometry okay so whatever molecular investigations that is there like for example for diagnosis of cml you are using bcr abl the the probes you are use using okay to identify that 
so cytogenetics is basically utilized so the use of all these things in details you are going to learn in the medical genetics now medical genetics group is a very upcoming field now if you see in the who all the classifications are now based out of the the, the molecular genetics only right so more or less okay in india i am not saying that in the next 5 years all the the medical genetics things is going to you know will become very upcoming no it is not like that even if you see in the best setups and in the biggest colleges also okay or in many medical colleges if you see even simple basic procedures like immunohistochemistry chemistry is yet not available so you can understand that it is going to take another 10 to 15 years okay that this medical genetics becomes a part of every department or a separate specialty or you know something separate in our medical curriculum so there is a long way but even if you see in in you know 20 years back in 2000 2001 no one used to care about md radio diagnosis it was you know a very bad field but now it is number one field maybe in the in the near future medical genetics is going to you know but there is no such you know thing in the next 5 or 10 years you will i don't see anything in the medical genetics group so the problem with this super specialty is that after you do the uh, in the medical genetics you will have to remain associated with the institute where they are performing such studies or in research work so this is the drawback of medical genetics and that is why this seats go vacant for medical genetics scheme is it very clear yes okay now this is about the the super specialty that is a neat ss that we have discussed now okay okay now we are going to see about ini ss that is institute of national importance super specialty so what are the institutes which are coming under this so aims okay all the aims delhi plus all other aims aims rishikesh aims patna bhubaneswar jaipur all the aims aims kalyani every aims is included under this along with that nimhans comes under this along with that pgi chandigarh comes and one institute i am not uh, sri bhuna something like that in thiruvananthapuram okay one more institute is there i don't remember the entire name that is also in, uh, you know present in in this ini ss now in the ini ss in the ini ss group remember one important thing that in the institute of national importance exam they are uh, having exam two times a year they are, they conduct exams twice a year so twice a year examination means that they are going to conduct their examination once in the month of january and another they are going to conduct in the month of july so in the month of january and in the month of july basically the exam is conducted okay two times a year remember their exams are conducted in two parts okay the first part of the exam it is an 80 marks exam which is conducted and via the part 1 exam you can get admission into all the institutes except aims so the part 1 exams okay which is carrying 80 marks you can get admission into all the institute of national importance except aims for aims once you qualify in the part 1 exam for aims at the center where you want to take admission 20 marks exam will be conducted at the aims only so that will there will be a laboratory assessment or in the departmental assessment will be there and you have to separately get 50% in the part 1 exam and 50% in the part 2 exam you have to get okay only after both the stages of the exam you will qualify and you will get admissions in the dm okay in aims okay in aims okay so for aims i hope this is very clear yes yes i think jipmar is also included sorry yes i think jipmar i think is also included i will have to confirm this okay it is not coming actually jipmar might be included but i am thinking only in terms of md pathology i think the seats for md pathology i mean the dm histopathology or super specialty in pathology i think is not available but i will show you and i will recheck the same and i will show you I, there is a query over here i have already shared the brochure in the group kindly just check i have shared the july 2023 brochure has been shared okay so can kindly just check okay i think it's it is included but for pathology i think it is not relevant so as you can see the pattern of exam it is a shorter exam it is a one and a half hour exam with 80 questions and 80 marks okay it is uh, conducted in english and there is an objective marks question so every one answer is giving you 
one mark and incorrect answer is giving you incorrect answer is giving you minus one third incorrect answer is giving you minus one third okay so basically what you have to understand over here is that this is the marking scheme now for need super speciality remember any correct answer for need super speciality you will gain four marks whereas a negative answer will gain minus one mark that is for need super speciality okay okay now what is very important that we need to understand over here uh, is that that the dm that what are the specialities and what are the eligibilities that is there now i have only discussed those lines okay which are relevant to us now if you see dm in clinical hematology this is in accordance to the july 2023 brochure of prospectus that we are having so basically if you see over here the dm clinical hematology only md dnb and medicine pediatrics okay of aims or any other institute which is recognized by nmc they are eligible for this exam and dm clinical hematology seat again present in in uh, in, in pgimer or pgi chandigarh okay but uh, only md medicine not even pediatric people they cannot take dm clinical hematology in them so basically what why i have included this i want to tell you that you people are not eligible for dm he clinical hematology why are the ini ss exams so clinical hematology is not an option why are this exam okay second thing is dm hematopathology now this dm hematopathology this course is not there in your need super speciality it is only there in ini ss okay so who all are eligible any person who is an md or dnb in pathology they are eligible for this exam so dm hematology you hematopathology you can get in aims and pgimer okay so over here the thing is you are doing all the part of clinical hematology as a pathologist but you are not taking the clinical part that is hematopathology you will be reporting mainly the blood slides you will be reporting mainly the bone marrow and you will be carrying out the bone marrow procedures that is the only thing that you will do okay again the seats are only available in aims and pgi dm histopathology if you see is again only available in pgi and the requirement is md pathology or equivalent now remember dm histopathology such dm is not available via neat ss only onco pathology is available by a neat ss is this point crystal clear to everyone now there is something called as dm neuropathology which is only available in cases of nimhans okay so dm neuropathology is only available in nimhans okay and for that md dnb so via iniss you can get access to these courses so as someone was asking me about gipmer yes so maybe in gipmer other super specialties are there but as far as i know as i was looking i think it is not included over here for the super specialty part but again i may be wrong kindly just cross check once in the brochure that i have i have shared with you people so you as an md or a dnb pathologist you can only get seat via iniss in the dm programs only which programs dm hematopathology histopathology and neuropathology and these are the respective institutes where you are going to get even if you see medical genetics so dm in medical genetics okay it is not available to md pathologist okay only md pediatrics medicine obstetric gynecology are eligible for aims and only md pediatrics or equivalent are available for pgi so i have just compared to you that though you are eligible for clinical hemat and medical genetics in case of neat ss but the same is not true in case of ini ss is this point crystal clear to everyone yes okay now over here because the seats are not many so i so the seat matrix there is a seat matrix now you ask sir how many seats are there So the seat matrix for INI SS, if you see, what is it? So in the AIMS New Delhi, if you see the hematopathology, you are having two seats for general. PGI again one seat is there. Total seat is three. For DM histopathology, three seats are available in PGI Chandigarh, and one seat for neuropathology available in case of Nimhan. So these are the seats. Total around six, seven seats are available in INI SS. or ana super speciality 
ओके नाउ यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग दैट सर यू हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द सीट मेट्रिक्स ऑफ आई एन एस एस वॉट अबाउट द सीट मेट्रिक्स ऑफ नीट सुपर स्पेशलिटी नाउ द सीट मेट्रिक्स फॉर द नीट सुपर स्पेशलिटी आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर इन साइड अवर व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप इन द नीट सुपर स्पेशलिटी ग्रुप so kindly go through that it's a very long list and it is very difficult for us to you know go so state wise they have given all the seats together so you can go and see which seats are available in which college okay is this point very very clear to you people yes any doubt is there with regards to this please tell me see our okay sir can you please specify the courses or institutes where dnb candidates are not eligible now see i have uh, see there is nothing called as not eligible i have already told you dnb or everywhere you can see that you can uh, be accepted they are requiring equivalent wherever the term equivalent is there that means dnb are eligible as well okay wherever the term equivalent is there that dnb is available as well. as in that your question is as far as i know so even in the neat super speciality everywhere if you see i have used the term md dnb so whatever eligibility is there for this it is there over here also the only thing is that in case of dnb super speciality as per eligibility criteria everywhere they have given md dnb so there is no difference as in md pathologist is eligible for some exam but dnb pathologist is not eligible for certain exam that i don't think is there because everywhere clearly in the prospectus for this year they have given md or dnb pathology okay is this point very clear to everyone okay any more doubts anyone is having okay so basically this is the first half of the lecture and this was an easy part and this part i think many of you people must be knowing so this part we have discussed now now the next part that we are going to discuss is very very important there are three important questions to be answered that if anyone is interested to pursue this particular dm exam okay whether they should pursue the exam in the current scenario if not what are the uh, you know if if yes or if no whatever be what are the pros what are the cons of pursuing dm uh, uh, you know uh, uh, super speciality in case of pathology how you can approach i am going to discuss how you should approach the exam i have myself given the exams and also cracked the exams so i will tell you it is a very easy exams not for clinical hematology now but for mainly for onco pathology or if you are giving pathology based exams it is it will be a cake walk for you because not many people are going to give the exam there are good number of seats and there is a good chance that you can get a seat but if you are planning for clinical hematology the approach has to be little different that i will tell you so have now, discussed the first half of the video which was with regards to how the neat super speciality as well as the inic inis super speciality exams are conducted what is the pattern of examination in each what are the eligibility criteria what courses you are eligible in case of neat super speciality versus what courses you are eligible in case of uh, ini super speciality so my question to you is that is it worth to you know uh, pursuing is it worth to pursue super speciality in our country yes is it worth anyone has any kind of idea or what do you think so basically the answer can be quite subjective now see it all depends on what your attitude is towards the subject pathology whether you are going to continue in this field whether you have interest in the field whether you were forced into this field whether you did not have any option to pursue so you have taken this out of you know you know but yet your heart is lying in clinical so basically the option is if if you are a clinical minded person if you like to see patients if you want to see patients if you want to be in the clinical aspect and you thought that okay at the time of taking md dnb pathology i was wishing that i know that you know you can do clinical hematology so i wish to do clinical hematology so for those students who wish to do clinical hematology okay it is a good branch it is not a bad branch it is a very good branch okay but the only problem is for that you have to go to any such coaching or some some institute 
वेर इन दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग कोचिंग फ्रॉम फॉर मेडिसिन ओके सो रिमेंबर वॉट एवर एग्जाम्स यू गिव वॉट एवर एग्जाम्स यू गिव दे विल नॉट हैव एन इंच ऑफ और और एनी पिंच ऑफ इवन पैथोलॉजी दे विल हैव हंड्रेड परसेंट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम मेडिसिन इज इट पॉसिबल येस बट इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिफिकल्ट यू हैव टू कम्पीट विद द एम डी मेडिसिन पीपल ओके एम डी पीडियट्रिक्स पीपल ओके इवन एम डी बायोकेमिस्ट्री पीपल so this is about the clinic thing if you want to do the clinical hematology part okay then this is the line of choice now if you ask me if yet you are clinical minded okay and you want to go for the clinics only there is another route that you have to give the neat pg exam again for the clinical branch of choice that is also a very good option okay so these are the two options for those individuals who want to switch over to the clinical side okay for them this is the path this is the route if you ask me yes why i need pg you are going to get access to many different kinds of clinical subjects now the number of seats have increased even the dnb seats are incorporated private uh, colleges seats are also incorporated so you have a vast amount of seats which are available and yes you can get a college of your you know you can get a degree of your choice or diploma of your choice okay in a clinical field it's quite easy as compared to when you had enrolled okay now about clinical hematology one thing i would like to make clear the basic ground reality in clinical hematology i would like to make it very clear to you people about clinical hematology it is a very good you know is a very good very very nice and upcoming branch but the amount of seats that are available for clinical hematology four seats eight seats many colleges so there are multiple individuals who are passing out in the field of clinical hematology but are there so many patients available are there so many cases to deal with ask this question so ultimately ultimately i will tell you this clinical hematologist is only earning by performing bone marrow procedure or bone marrow biopsy then bone marrow aspiration this is what they are and this is what their bread and butter is like for a surgeon the bread and butter is appendix hernia operation so for the clinical hematologist it is bone marrow aspiration biopsy now just for performing these procedures do you need to do clinical hematology ask yourself this question i personally i have was able to do around 700 to 800 procedures while i was in my pg and right now i have done more than 1500 such procedures and i am doing independent reporting of the aspiration and the biopsies as well so basically is it required is clinical hematology required for doing this there are no number of patients the patients are less so what is happening that that even the hods of different colleges they are fighting with each other for this patient for a single patient so this is the basic problem in case of clinical hematology there is a saturation this is what i want to tell you but it is a good branch it is a very fulfilling good branch but there is saturation i am not uh, making you against that if you want to do that you can absolutely do but i am giving you the present scenario now think about think about think about the different other fields like for example oncopathology is there right apart from that there is histopathology as well now you tell me you have already given the exam you have read histopathology i don't know why they have separated oncopathology from histopathology most of the times if you see you are reporting the 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 non neoplastic as well as neoplastic list maybe in oncopathology you are only dealing with the cancer maybe but in majority of the time you are dealing in histopathology only right now if you just do oncopathology and if you are just treating the cancer now have you seen a lab which is which is going to pay you money only for reporting cancers or the lab uh, you know or the lab person or for example you want to work in srl you are saying i am an oncopathologist for example i have done this this is my criteria i will report only this have you seen any lab which is recruiting oncopathologist separately histopathologist separately no they want one pathologist who is going to report everything including your bone marrow aspiration biopsy hematology clinical pathology even biochemistry report even your your stool cultures even microbiology report right so is there is there any kind of uh, you know a separate advantage in pursuing oncopathology histopathology okay i understand in pgi you are having histopathology okay now i am thinking if you do an sr ship if you do an sr ship for 3 years okay or even for one year two year for example you do it from tata or from any good 
would um, government medical college in your uh, state so all the states are having a good medical college old medical college right so you are getting lots of cases over there if you do sr ship if you do sr ship for one year two year three year you are going to gain a lot of experience in that time yes or no yes and now the nmc has made it mandatory that before you join any medical college as an assistant professor one year of compulsory sr ship in a teaching medical college is compulsory before you are joining as an assistant professor this has to be kept in mind so my thinking is so what is the the advantage of doing this now for example you do not have to depend a lot on you know on anyone else for example uh, just i'm saying for example you don't worry about money money is not a criteria for you you for example you want to add a degree add an extra degree for example because you wish so or you like so or you want to read again so in that situation you can go for you know one more feather in the cap so you can give the exam again you can get onco pathology and histo pathology so you can go for that but if you are doing sr ship or some fellowship in in tata medical or tata memorial or in any tata hospital throughout the country you are going to get adequate amount of exposure okay and they are having availability of all the latest equipments and all the latest things and all the ic panels are there so i don't see that there is any kind of difference which is associated in you know doing sr ship versus onco pathology and histopathy now, now just Im imagine you are doing a dm again inside of a dm for example you have passed out and you are dm hematopathologist or histopathologist so do you think do you think for example you are a lab owner you want to recruit a pathologist you are a lab owner you want to recruit one person okay what is the rate at which you are going to recruit it varies but as of now the a full time pathologist it varies between state to state but on an average it is between 1.2 to 1.5 lakhs okay this is what is the standard rate for a dnb or a md pathologist who has passed out or uh, not passed out also who is who can independently report a slide this is what they are getting now in delhi you might get more amount of money in certain special union territories like for example andaman nicobar island over there the rates are very high because you have to leave your you know place and it is a remote place so again they are paying 1.75 like that again for example if you go to a major city like bombay or you go in calcutta the rates are not very high if you are get, get, getting 1 1.2 lakh it is it is it is very actually high you know it is the maximum that you are getting and from there as per experience your salary is going to increase this is i am talking about in case of private labs like for example in case of srl in case of lal path in case of such laboratories so now you think if you are a lab owner you want to run the lab now there are two candidates over here one is an md pathologist and one is then dm histopath or dm oncopath okay now for example you have taken the interview of both the person now you have asked certain questions of clinical pathology non neoplastic lesion plus malignancy to this person so you will see that this person is better able to solve them as compared to this person this person will say no i have a dm in in onco pathology so i am not going to report hematology i am not going to report that i am not going to report this and that right or not he will say this so over there you will be expected to perform all the stuff you have to do the clinical pathology part you have to report all the histopathology including the malignancy as well as non malignancy you have to report all the fluids fnc now being a dm histopathologist now you face, you you say that you know i am not going to do this or i am not going to do that so that option is not there for you understand what i am trying to say so this is very very important now for example you you will say i will not report the fnc because i am dm so that should not happen acha one more thing right now just came in my mind i think i have forgotten this part and i don't know i have to go and check in case of ini in case of pgi there is one more specialty that is also available that i forgot to tell you it was there previously cytopathology cytopathology is also there okay and dm and for this eligibility you need to have md dnb pathology so i will check once again whether they are providing this or whether you know it might be that for the july session this seat is not there maybe for the january session this is there but usually in pgi chandigarh cytopathology seat is also there now for example you have done a dm in some specialty and now you want to get recruited in a lab so in the lab as of in the current scenario they will choose md pathologist okay and even if if for example a dm histopathologist agrees to do all the work they are not going to give you more amount of money they are going to 
you know they are going to negotiate the best deal if you are a newcomer or for example you have less amount of experience okay then for example they will negotiate a deal at 1 lakh you are going to you will think i have done the dm i should get around 1.5 lakh so if he can get the work done in 1 lakh he is going to hire the md pathology this is the very very practical scenario that i am telling you as of now think in terms of a business person as an hr person so as of now if you are doing a dm in histopathology then you have to look for jobs in that institute only or in some central institutes which are having the vacancies so what is the problem if you are living or if you are a person from south india okay then for your job dependency you have to go to new delhi or chandigarh or in that place because even after doing that particular course when you want to come back you will see that in your place you don't have for example i tell tell you suppose you like to do dm in neuropathology at nimhans now you tell me apart from nimhans which other institute is reporting this slide or for example even if they are reporting the brain slide are they keeping or hiring a separate dm neuropathologist as of this point of time no so if you are doing a dm in neuropathology if you do a dm in neuropathology again you will have to hunt for job in that place or you have to hunt for job in those place which are doing work only in relation to the brain understand what i am trying to tell tell you what i am telling you that as of this point of time there is no special uh, thing for you know for a lab where you can go and tell me that you know that i am a dermatopathologist or i am a this pathologist so i am going to work over here only no only if you are ready if you know that there is a specific place which is providing work uh, you know fellowship or who are doing work in that specialized area and i want to do my you know degree from there and i want to practice over there till that is not clear okay then there is no point according to me according to me it is no point cytopathology again once you have done cytopathology 3 years you are doing something in fns now if you come back to your home state they are not going to just pay you for looking at the fns slides or for looking at the pap slides no they are paying you money for looking at everything overall right and this culture and trend is going to continue for the next 10 years at least 10 to 15 years this culture is not going to change is this point again very very clear to everyone any doubt is there with regards to this so if you ask me i will tell if for example money is a concern for you you don't want to waste time already you have invested a lot of time and energy in of your life if you want to just gain experience in a particular field like for example you want to do sr ship because right now independent reporting is very important for you people for that you need to have exposure in sr ship after sr ship you become confident then you can go outside and you can report these slides independently and you can work anywhere and everywhere independently understand so what is very important you have to learn okay it is not like uh, like you do dm in cardiology or dm in, in diabetes right now seriously a person who is having diabe diabetes or even a person who is having stomach pain in big cities like calcutta delhi they will not even go to md medicine they will search for diabetologist they will search for you know a person gastroenterologist they will directly go over there and even the rates are minimal just like the md is charging even the dm is charging so they are preferring that so for md medicine that is a must but is it the same in our scenario in pathology no it is not the same and that is why many people are not taking or not pursuing these fields as of this point of time but over a period of time as technology is going to grow as there will be separate seats and separate uh, you know things uh, for the pathologist or and separate post uh, will be there for oncopathology for hemat like for example in in other countries like in saudi arabia if you see hematologist is a completely different course histopathologist individuals they do not see hematology slide but over here in our country right now that uh, thing is not there so a a person a, a md pathologist has to report each and everything okay so just remember that point i am telling you only those people can do the onco and histopathology for example money is not a criteria time is not a criteria for their sake for just they want to do they want to add one more degree to their hat or they want to or they are really very interested in in reading the cns so they want to go in the nimhans only whole of their life they want to live in nimhans and they want to dedicate their life in that way if you want uh, research oriented if for example you want to do something in cytopathology only and you want to do everything over there then you want to stay in pgi chandigarh only okay or you want to pursue or you want to go abroad only 
and you, you want to do some research work in that only then you should pursue according to my thing okay else i don't see there is any advantage so is it very very clear so what to do next if i was there and i will tell you i had appeared for the exam i had appeared for the exam in the time where 60% questions were asked from pathology and 40% questions were asked for example from medicine i had appeared in that time and basically in that time actually i had did not prepare i did i did not work that much hard i had prepared for 3 4 months only so basically when i had given the exam i got a seat and even i was getting a seat in my home in my parent medical college only so but i have not taken because i wasn't interested i did not is not like i don't like clinical hematology but i wasn't interested because uh, i felt that this course is enough for me but you might vary but what i am trying to tell you is that the course if you compare with the neat pg entrance exam this is much much easier exam okay so how do you prepare for this neat or ini ct exam i have shared you one book that is the review of pathology yes of robins and cotrens review of pathology we are having clinical based questions so those should be very crystal clear to you because they are directly taking questions from there and they are putting especially in ini exam ini super specialty review of pathology is very very important second thing is any standard pathology mcq book right now we are working to introduce pathology mcq so any pathology mcq that you are reading for neat pathology for example i am telling you one uh, is there for sparsh gupta you also know that you have prepared with that book one other pathology mcq book is there uh, for example by i think i forgetting the name so you can see two three names any standard pathology mcq book you can solve very very important is i had whatever notes that you have access to i have read the same notes that is present in our simply pathology from robins okay so from robins it is very very important to solve the general pathology part completely you should read chapter 1 to 10 they are taking the from you know how i have how you have read so those who have read notes thoroughly from my notes because i have covered each and every line you will have no problem whatsoever answering the general pathology part from there everything will be very easy they are asking directly from there for the systemic pathology whatever notes i have provided you that knowledge you have to apply over there because whenever i am discussing with you any point okay that those questions are being asked so from the systemic pathology part review of pathology again becomes very important systemic pathology part because clinical based questions are being asked from that particular section okay so for pathology my notes whatever you have read for the exam just you read those notes and review of pathology all the clinical based questions in the ini ss it is very important and even for the systemic pathology part they are asking questions directly from there they just pick up they don't even change the age of the patient even all the measurements are same so trust me if you solve these two 100% you are going to get the dmc okay and even so just if you go and sit for the exam because many people they drop out they don't take the seat so as a result the seats are vacant so if you just wish to go for the exam there is for example sometimes the situation can also arise like this that you want to do src but you are not getting a job you are sitting idle so what to do it is better that at least you sit for the exam you go for dm oncopathology or histopathology whatever at least what is going to happen that you will start earning money and you will not sit idle in the meantime but if for example you are getting a chance to do the src and something like that then you go for sr ship on this is according to my thing okay so this is how you have to approach for the exams so right now whoever has uh, that is why i was not allowing those members who are not in simply pathology for not continuing so whoever is there in the simply pathology group you please go through whatever notes are there because see just i'll tell you one thing you have read the notes from simply pathology you have faced the examiner so you know that whatever questions i have discussed okay in in the uh, theory and in the practicals and whatever things i have discussed they are asking the same question and those are the same people that they are going to set the systemic pathology questions also so the questions some of the questions will be framed in that manner so whatever you have read 
those same questions will be asked just remember general pathology from my notes should be 100% read before the exam and you can solve the general path general pathology you don't need to solve from review of pathology general pathology they are asking one liners any standard pathology mcq book like sparsh gupta or like any like devesh mishra or any book okay pathology mcq book any standard just solve the general pathology they are asking direct direct you read my notes you go through the mcq questions you will be able to answer all of them similarly for systemic pathology review of pathology again becomes very important and in inss they are asking uh, questions directly from there so just if you solve these two things and my notes are there if you just re revise whatever notes are there from simply pathology 100% you will top the exam there is no issue regarding that this year we have made available all the information free of course because we are not dedicated towards that because to be very frank reason if we see out of uh, 1000 or 1200 residents we are having out of that maybe 50 60 will give the exam and they will be interested so to make a separate course for those 50 60 people will become very difficult so that is why we are waiting maybe next year we come with a with a separate course for uh, you know for, for neat ss and for inss okay okay some of you if you if you have understood if you have any doubts till now kindly please tell me at this point of time jo bhi doubts hai aapka please ask at this point of time with regards to the future in pathology if you want to know anything okay just ask me in addition to the sr ship i forgot to tell you dekho aapke fellowships bhi hote hain okay there are many kinds of fellowships as well but remember one thing fellowships jaise hai na for example you want to do fellowship in tata so you gain the experience then privately you want to practice is no issue but as a fellowship fellowship i don't think is counted as an sr ship remember for applying as an ap in any college private ho ya aapka uh, central ho ya state government ho always remember that sr ship in a teaching medical college for one year is a must for applying as an assistant professor anywhere okay you can do multiple sr ships sr ship aur ek aur kya hai aapko sr ship nahi mil raha hai aapko fellowship nahi mil raha hai to private labs join karo private labs as in those small labs which are not having histopathology but for example those small labs private labs they are having for example aapke clinical pathology rahega fnsc will be there okay a uh, fluid reporting will be there pap reporting will be there semen analysis will be there in those laboratories so ye jo chote chote labs hote hai na they will easily pay you for part time around 40 to 50000 they will pay you can join easily two to three such labs you can join मंडे टू सैटरडे आप अगर ज्वाइन करते हो तो इजिली आर अप्रोक्सीमेटली वन पॉइंट टू टू वन पॉइंट फाइव लैक्स यू कैन अर्न वेरी इजिली इट इज नॉट एन इशू एट ऑल तो मेजोरिटी ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल डूइंग दैट ओनली एंड मेनी पीपल आई हैव सीन जैसे हमारा भी देर बॉज अ बॉन्ड सो यू विल हैव बॉन्ड सर्विस ऑल्सो सो एटलीस्ट फॉर पैथोलॉजी आई बिलीव दैट इफ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग एनी थिंग सो बॉन्ड अमाउंट इज वेरी हाई इन आवर स्टेट द बॉन्ड अमाउंट वॉज थर्टी लैक रुपीज in maharashtra i think it is around approximately 50 lakh i don't know it might have changed so different states are having different amounts of bond okay so if you at least according to me at least one year you do the bond service and you see how it is going don't pay the bond amount at least for pathology don't pay 30 lakh 50 lakh rupees it is a huge amount of money okay to pay if you invest that money in a in a in a mutual fund or somewhere that is going to give you a very good return but throwing the money over here in the bond doesn't make a lot of sense okay this is for those individuals who are the middle class who has a lot of money for them yet they they can break the bond and they can do whatever they wish okay so this is what you can do as a pathologist after passing your md dnb exams okay any doubts you are having with regards to this because after this i will just uh, you know draw a light on frc path and after that i will end this particular video you can type in your doubts anyone any doubt is there okay coming to the frc path exam okay now frc path is for which individual for those individual who are willing to settle in the united kingdom okay there are two parts there is first part okay one question is there could you elaborate on bond service see bond is for those individuals who are doing uh, who are graduating or who have done md DN, uh, md not dnb md from government medical college for example in west bengal 
I have passed from the medical college Kolkata. It is a government college. Any person who is passing from a government medical college has to serve bond of three years in the periphery. Similarly, Maharashtra also has some amount of bound bond. I think one year bond is there. Rajasthan has ten uh, has a five year bond. Assam has ten year bond. Delhi does does doesn't have a bond. So basically, other many states they have uh, you know bonds of different duration. So what I was telling is that it is if it's a one year bond, you continue with the bond. Okay, bond is wherein you have taken an undertaking at the time of exam, at the time of admission that you will serve in the peripheries after you finish your MD, and you are paid in the bond service. Okay, so this is basically the bond service what I am telling. I am just telling you that uh, at least do one year of your bond before you want to break the bond. Okay, because in that case you will be in your job and you will be earning some amount of money. In the meantime, you can prepare for. You know, I N I or F R C path or any super specialty that you wish to prepare. Is this point very very clear now? Yes. Okay. Now coming to you know, we don't have bond here. So yes, yes. So you must be in in some state where bond is, or you must be from a private college, so you don't know about bond. Okay. Okay. So basically, about F R C path, if you have decided that no, I want to go to the United Kingdom because there is no coming back. Okay, once you are doing FRC path, then you have to stay there. So there are two parts. Part one is there. Part two is there. So approximately more than ninety percent who are appearing in the part one, they are clearing the FRC path, and approximately only point nine percent are getting through the. Uh, not point nine. Sorry, this is not a good figure. Let me tell you. Okay, approximately ten to twenty percent they clear the part two exams, and out of these. 10 to 20 percent, only less than 1 percent, around 0.9 percent, only 0.9 percent are able to land a job. They can get a job in 0.9 percent only. So there is a very dirty game which is played by the UK government. So what is happening over here? Let me tell you. FRC path, uh, FRC path part one exam. it is just like the us assembly part 1 exam so it is a very easy exam and i don't have a lot of knowledge about what is the procedure but i am giving a general outline the part 1 i think the exams are conducted every 6 months if i'm not wrong there are two ses sessions one is the fall and one is the summer session something like that so the basic problem with frc path is that it is not like people are not getting the job okay they are getting job but you have to wait a long period of time okay secondly you need to have at least 14 to 16 lakh rupees should be in hand with you if you want to go via the frc pathway it requires a good amount of money now the thing is the problem is most of the individuals they are cracking the part 1 exam very easy it is a theoretical based exam computer cbt exam online exam you are very easily people are cracking this exam and what happens that once you crack the frc path 1 you are boosted with a lot of confidence that see i have gained such and such marks in my part 1 exam and now i am eligible to go for the part 2 exam now when you are going from the part 1 exam to the part 2 exam even the cost of the or uh, uh, this exam forms i think it's a lot of i don't know the exact figure but it is very costly to sit for every exam that you are sitting the exam fees are very high okay so from there part 1 then you have to go for part 2 when you go for the part 2 exam that means you have to apply for the visa you will pay some visa fees which is very high apart from that you will have to go and make some place and accommodations for yourself in the united kingdom yes you will have to make some arrangements for yourself somewhere there is a cost of food living something will be there yes and you have to live in the united kingdom for some period of time then this part 2 exam it is quite a difficult exam it is not very easy as you can see the pass percentage rate is only 10 to 20% for the international medical individuals who are going i am not trying to dishearten you i am trying to give you a clear idea about what is happening i have one student who actually i have had taken our uh, simply pathology coaching and from our notes only he has cracked the part 1 exam then he went for the part 2 exam and now he is not able to crack the part 2 he has given the exam two times now he is living for one year in uk already he has spent more than 20 25 lakhs over there okay now even after you have cleared the part 2 exam even after you have cleared the part 2 exam okay you have to go for the gmc registration 
okay the british uh, medical council registration you have to get and that registration is only going to come when vacancy comes and you will not believe you will not believe if you go through the current data they do not publish this data and they will not tell you about this data so for example there is one or two vacancy is open up for that already 10000 applicants are there how do you how do you put yourself across this i i think 10000 is a big uh, number it won't be 10000 but at least 700 to 800 applicants are there for a single seat now you tell me when your number is going to come and also the registration council registration fees is again very high when you apply for the registration you pay a lot they will take money at all the places first time they will take the money and after that you have to just wait wait you cannot sit in the uk for that that much long you living in the uk means you have to pay expenses for your living and everything so although it sounds very nice frc path and everything but this is the harsh reality and this is the scam and the game that is going on this is the true game that is this is the dirty game that is uh, being played by the uk government i will share a original article on the same by the bbc i will search i someone has shared me that article i will share you the same article about that not only for frc pad the same dirty game is also going for plab okay the same story is going for plab as well so the uk government they are trying to create a lot of revenue they are trying to make the students come till the uk you know till you know uh, in the united kingdom they are allowing you to come inside then they are generating income via you so this is the harsh reality of frc path that we are facing right now but again individuals who can afford who can go and who can give the time and energy also for them once you get into the frc path once you get into the degree once you are settled in the uk there is no place better than that why it is very nice because in the united kingdom there is no concept of md path you you go towards speciality like dermatopathology uropathology gynec pathology okay hematology or hematopathology everything is done under that heading so every organ or gi pathology so every organ has a separate dedicated pathologist and they are working with the surgeons also you know so there is a very nice break up and very nice system in the uk so if you get through the uk if you have that amount of time energy and if you wait for some period of time maybe you take 2 to 3 years time in your in your account then frc path is a really really good option as compared to our country okay so i think i would like to rest my case now any doubts anyone is having yes any doubts yes okay so we are going to stop at this point only so thank you very much everyone okay one question is there why is what is where is md path applicable abroad see md pathology applicable where is means directly are you trying to ask that whether you can do md path with md pathology degree you can go Uh, abroad and you can use your degree yes the question is very right nicely put see uh, one thing is there i'll tell you okay so the basic thing over here is that that i'll tell te- i'll tell tell you what you have to do okay the basic thing over here is that in dubai or abu dhabi or in sharjah okay so all of them they have their separate medical council now md pathologists again over there they are having lab medicine is separate cytology is separate histopathologist is separate so there are different different okay for doing now what you have to do what you can do over here in these cases if you go to the uh, the prometric okay the prometric is looking after all these things so the basic there is an eligibility for appearing in these exams So the eligibility is that you should have at least three years experience in that field. This is true for, or this is standing for all the sub specialities. So for these locations, yes, you can go, but first you should have experience for three years before you go to the Middle Eastern countries. Another another thing I am telling you, you can apply is in the Caribbean islands. So in the Caribbean islands. what happens that you can also join in the caribbean islands directly as an md pathologist okay 
but over there you have to see uh, for example one such university is sgu granada is there or st james university is there ross university is also there okay okay ross university is also there so in the caribbean in the caribbean islands okay in the caribbean islands you can also go over there but these are very small small islands so from time to time you make uh, your uh, you know uh, what do you call it your bio data okay you make your bio data and inside your bio data you give all of your you know experience and whatever you have done and you can drop in your this thing over here you can drop in uh, your uh, resume over here in these universities they have a separate employment you will go to their website you can see employment list is there so once you go there you can drop in everything in the caribbean islands you can go in uh, in middle eastern countries you can go so the only drawback over here is for example they are paying you approximately they will pay you uh, around 6 to 6000 to 8000 as a consultant 6000 to 8000 us dollars uh, they pay per month like that so which is coming approximately 4 lakh to approximately 7 lakhs rupees per month but remember in those places like caribbean islands over there the cost of living is also between 2.5 to 3 lakhs per month okay the cost of living is also very high one studio apartment is also going to cost you near about 1200 to 1500 uh, us dollars okay and then this is the least amount of money that you have to pay to live also so it is not like it is a lot of money it is comparable if you look at the purchase power parity it is equivalent to approximately 1.5 to 2 lakhs of indian money okay so i think i will rest my case now i think uh, all these things are very clear to everyone any more doubts and questions anyone is having